Staffing agencies were a big help to hospitals during the COVID-19 pandemic health crisis. They helped pump up the number of available nurses to complement the rising numbers of patients infected with the virus at that time. Everything was going well and smoothly until Trudeau came in with his vaccine mandates that prevented unvaccinated healthcare workers from doing their job, which was to ensure that patients infected with the virus recovered as soon as possible. An effect of Trudeau's mandates was that these unvaccinated health professionals were indefinitely suspended from the hospitals in which they worked, thereby depleting the number of medical professionals in hospitals in a period when the country needed every single one of them. To make up for their losses, hospitals leaned more on these staffing agencies that offered temporary nurses. They thought they were being wise by doing so. But the current situation in the health sector shows that these hospitals had simply done themselves more harm than good in turning to staff agencies, and Trudeau has once again harmed the country's already shaky economy. Let's use Ontario as a case study since they form some part of the basis of this news. According to the University Health Network, which is the largest health network in Canada, the province of Ontario has spent $6.7 million on temporary nurses between the fiscal year of March 2021 and 2022. And of course you don't think such an amount of money came from the hospitals and not the provincial government in Ontario. We are talking about $6.7 million of taxpayers' money going to these private temporary staffing agencies. What makes it the more saddening is the fact that in the end, Trudeau had to suspend the vaccine mandates, meaning that those who were unvaccinated and suspended as a consequence could get back to work. So why did he put it in the first place? Anyways, the damage has already been done and now those who were unjustly suspended are demanding compensation and they have every right to do so. Meanwhile, instead of finding amicable ways to reintegrate those who were previously affected by Trudeau's vaccine mandates, the government is paying more than twice the normal price for temporary nurses. Emphasis on the word temporary. These nurses aren't staying long-term with these hospitals, and yet they are being paid more than twice the salary of those who actually work for these hospitals. Don't blame the staffing agencies, though. They are private companies running on a capitalist system, so they are always looking for means to maximize profit. That is why they more than double the price it took to prize a temporary nurse from their hands for a limited period of time. Well, it is unfortunate that the government is now their guinea pig, senselessly paying such huge amounts of money on them when they can recall the employees who were unjustly suspended, reach a settlement, and if possible, pay a fee and get them back to work. Catherine Hoy, who is the president of the Ontario Nurses Association, which represents more than 68,000 registered nurses and other health professionals, showed her disapproval of the situation. In her words, she said, if I were making $112 an hour and you were making $45, how do you think that would go over? This statement was made in relation to what temporary nurses were paid and what other nurses were paid each per hour. It has also been said that such a salary structure leaves room for resentment between colleagues and coworkers that can quickly degenerate into something more harmful to the smooth running of the hospitals affected. Ivy Borjold, who is the research chair in Gender, Diversity, and the Professions at the University of Ottawa, also mentioned the case of resentment in a statement she made concerning the issue of agency staffing and the government's exorbitant spending on temporary nurses. Quoting her, she said, If you are working right next to someone else and they're making more than you, it's a built-in pay gap. It causes resentment. It may solve immediate staffing issues, but it creates long-term resentments in the system. And that is a fact that the government behind the salary structure of temporary nurses fails to understand. Dr. Michael Warner, who is an ICU physician at Michael Guerin Hospital in Toronto, made a video that he posted on Twitter concerning the prevailing issue. In the video, he said that prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, these agencies were charging $65 per hour, and when the pandemic struck, they upped the price to $110 per hour. And now, with the damaging effects of Trudeau's vaccine mandates, these agencies are charging far more than that with some pegging their rate at $140 per hour. Though the Premier, Dub Ford, said that he can't dictate what these private staffing agencies should set as their prices, I believe more should be done to curtail the excesses and get the wrongfully suspended nurses back to work, even if it means the government parting with some amount of money as one-time payment. $6.7 million would go a long way in fixing some other parts of Ontario's economy, and also help boost it if utilized correctly instead of spending it all on temporary nurses. It was said, too, that the amount of money spent by the University Health Network on temporary nurses stood at barely over $1 million in 2018. This means that the current spending is over 550% of what it was in 2018. You can now see how bad it really is. Borjolt raised a valid question when she asked why the government cannot bring back the nurses who had left with incentives and the like, what is stopping the government from calling back those nurses they had previously suspended and avoiding paying such huge amounts on temporary nurses? Is it pride or something that we are not aware of yet?
because it actually makes no sense that the government would choose a more expensive option in the face of a cheaper one. Recall that there has been a shortage of nurses across various hospitals as those who had to work double and maybe triple shifts are now burnt out and have taken vacations to rejuvenate. This coupled with the fact that those who were previously suspended haven't been recalled has forced hospitals to depend heavily on staffing agencies and this worsens the situation. Trudeau has created this problem and now it is left to the provincial governments to fix it while he chills at 24 Sussex Drive. I even read that he turned up four hours late to work after returning from his latest vacation to Costa Rica. Laughable. What are your thoughts on Ontario's spending on temporary nurses? Comment your thoughts in the comments section down below. We would like to hear them. We would appreciate it too if you bought us a cup of coffee for the work we are doing to bring you the truth at any cost. You can help us out by clicking the thanks button down below. We can really do with some caffeine for all the late nights. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.